<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to our ninth episode of Women Matters, a conversation between women about how to create a better world. And it is organized by the Wisdom Factory, mainly by myself. I'm Heidi Hörnlein, and I'm here in Paradiso Integrale in Italy. And today we have only Tammy Lee Meyer from Canada, but I'm very happy that she's here and we will talk about techniques and tools to create relationships and to deepen our connections. Hello, Tammy. Hi, thank you so much, Heidi. Mm -hmm. So let's just dive in. I know that last time we talked about ways of connecting deeper and you and Gertrude you presented the ideas which you have already tried out I think both of you and yes. you also began a process together and we wanted to know a little bit how this works and how it is gone and how you think to proceed I give over to you okay great uh, so essentially, the the idea is is to uh, go deeper with each other, and so it's a three part process, where the first hour uh, I spent um, uh, talking to Gertrude and really drawing out of out of her her work and her intentions, and and in an effort, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to go deeper into into each other and what we do. Um, and what motivates us. Uh, essentially, I have a thesis, I suppose, that we're all understanding our world from our, our point of view, and that that point of view um, basically drives us to do the work that we do. And when I look out at the world today, I'm deeply, deeply concerned at uh, the state of things. And I believe that there are people all over the world that feel the same way. But we don't talk about those things publicly. So this process we, we do, we record our, our sessions. And uh, the, the first part is, is to really focus on the, the, pers the one person. And then we switch roles so that that person can then uh, dive into uh, d so Gertrude can dive into my work. That's the next session we'll be doing. And then the third session will be how can our how can we help each other? How can where does our work intersect? And uh, are there connections we can make for for another for that other person? Uh, are there some insights that we had or inspiration that we had about uh, their work and and how how they're approaching it? Uh, so that we can we can know more about each other, so that we can actually help each other and uh, create some media that, that goes deeper into what it is that we think and feel and how we're meeting the challenges of the world today. Yeah, that sounds really great because the experience is that alone we cannot, we cannot make it, you know. For so many years I thought I'm the only one, you know, trying to do something or desperate because nothing works and so Fortunately, now with the internet, we can connect it with each other like-minded people. Because the thing is, if you, you might not be alone around you, a lot of people, but it might not tick. So to me, it happens, <coughs> excuse me, normally that we say, or stuck because we have more or less the same mindset, uh, we say things and then the people look and uh, and that was it. So there is no going deeper with the people we have around. Very few. There are very few. But now with the internet, we have the chance to do that. And I'm really, really so grateful and that you are here and that we can do that together. Because as you said, it is very concerning what is going on in the world just now. In the world, from the point of view of Mother Earth, you know, which is now really rebelling <laughs> against uh, what we are doing, you know, with all these fracking operations and so on, which you have the result in America. We have natural earthquakes. We had two big earthquakes 
two days ago, three days ago. It's another very big one come with a very big um, probability. And so we are trying to prepare a little bit. So this is one thing. And as if yes. it wasn't enough, we create all sorts of other dramatic situations, you know? And, uh, yes. And I, I'm only thinking, about, I, I'm not really following it, but what is happening in America with this uh, election thing, this is, it is beyond everything you can imagine. It is. It is really in a fall draw back into a wild way of not respecting each other, uh, of, of, of being, being uh, entitled to do whatever this guy wants to do without any concern for anybody else. So when we talk about the um, development, the red uh, energy in, in, in spiral dynamics and integral theory, and we heard a very lovely live stream on uh, SoundCloud and audio from Jeff Salzman addressing this. And you know, the first time where he is not so optimistic as he normally is. Right. For me, it was shocking the, when he reminded us that a president can give the order for using the atomic bomb without asking anybody. And the person who has no emotional control and goes only by anger and feeling, you know, or humiliated or attacked and thinking if he has to go down uh, in his nobody follows him, then everybody has to go down with them. No, he knew no, this sort of human attitude that when I have to <laughs> give up, nobody else is allowed. That's a certain level of development. And that really put me into anxiety that people don't see the danger. And it is so similar to what has happened in Germany about 70, 80 years ago, you know, not yeah. since at the beginning what could happen. And so I'm preoccupied for all these things. And I think talking about is good. But <laughs> it doesn't really uh, handle the, the situation, but it's, it's good to at least not to keep it inside the anxiety or the <clears throat> pain, which is there. So this is my mm. situation. And because of earthquakes tonight, we will sleep in the other house with this really earthquake um, secure. So if it is trembling as it did on Thursday and Wednesday, and if it should be nearer here, at least we are not It'll in be okay. The you know, but you know, it is, it, it, in many ways, it sounds like what people thought of 2012. Yes. It seems to come 2016, four years in, in, uh, in delay, so. Okay, yes. I don't want to, to, to spoil the mood, uh, the positive mood, because we have to be there for, to spread the positive uh, energy. Just let you know what my state of uh, mind and feeling is at the moment. Yes, well, you know, it's. It, I'm so sorry to hear about the earthquakes. And uh, I'm glad that you do have a place where you feel safer. That's earthquake proof for tonight. And you'll be in my thoughts and prayers for sure. Yeah, and uh, all the other people who live really near there, where probably the epicenters are, that's more in the mountains. We are a little bit distant. We are maybe in 30, 40 kilometers direct from the place, you know, but uh, there it's really, the, the house is crumbled and, okay. Wow. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And with regard to, you know, what's going on in, in America today, um, yeah, it's, it is of deep concern. And when I, when I look at, uh, you know, someone called it a clump, the Clint, Clinton-Trump scenario, um, 
I think it would have been much better for America if they would have had a true fight between good and evil, as in Bernie Sanders against Donald Trump, just to really bring that um, bring that conversation to Americans, like what is the world that we want to create together? And of course, in in America, um, the whatever whoever becomes president does affect the whole world, so it affects all of us. And I find it very interesting that um, while all of this noise is happening about the election, uh, what's going on on the ground in North Dakota at Standing Rock is is really what needs our focus and needs our attention. Uh, because what's happening is that the corporations are being protected by the North Dakota government, the state government. Um, the federal government has said, stand down. Um, and uh, yet what's happening is, is that p these people that are preying uh, on the land that has been unseated according to the Treaty of 1851, is uh, they are being removed by force. They are praying, they have no weapons, uh, and they are being shot at, um, they are being um, removed forcibly, and these are, are, are peaceful, peaceful protectors of our water. And so I think that, uh, that it's, it's convenient to have the conversation around the election that is over that is drowning out this very very important issue um, well it's fundamental to all of us this extractive uh, culture this way that we have this we have we just take um, and this has become a cultural norm and it threatens our very survival and so the fight right now um, that that's being brought by the state uh, is is really important for us to see and to uh, and to support uh, and I think that we're at the point where we all need to pray because it's it's um, come to uh, where we need to make collective decisions differently. And we need to have these important conversations uh, with each other, as you know. The the our media has also been sort of taken over by the corporatocracy, and so it's it's important for us, I think, to model how do we share together, how do we uh, how do we have these important conversations about the world that we are creating. Um, whether or not we feel we're empowered to or not. Uh, and so part of, the, part of the drive that I have to have these kinds of conversations is to uncover, uh, uncover what people talk about in their living rooms and in coffee shops and in the pub so that this narrative um, can change from this sense of, of uh, the powers that be won't let us do make the changes we need to make to what are people already what's 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 the state of what's going on oh, and how can we clearly look at that um and look at at look at it um deeply um and and really uh go uh deeper into w why people think that's happening and what they're perceiving of it because there's this there's this narrative um, that tells us that we don't have any power that uh, they're just going to do what they're going to do anyway, um, and I don't think that's true. I think that we have power, and part of what we can do to change that is to is to change the narrative to shed light on people that are doing very important things in their communities that are helping, and also to speak directly to power and and. Uh, give people voice uh, to share what it is that they think is is going on and what we can do about it. I think it's, I think it's really right, right over here. Over here. Um, because we have to not forget 
that we have the power. Yes. And that we can create something helpful together and give also the uplift to, to people who otherwise would say, oh, uh, I cannot do anything. What shall I do? No. And I think this is a very important, let's say, almost underground activity, you know, which uh, we are doing. It's in the energy field. It's not so direct an action. But you say, on the other hand, do something also in the world. No, it's, it's both together. And yes, I understand what you are trying to do is to collect people to, to do that, to, to change that. This yes. Of powerlessness into power and empower them. And so that's part of why I've been so drawn to your work too, Heidi, because the wisdom factory is, uh, is, is, is something that really inspires me. Uh, how can we use our wisdom to be able to navigate the path between uh, where we are right now to a better world that we can all conceive and, and uh, create together? Yeah, and also how can we increase our wisdom, isn't it? Yes. I was reading something the other day. Um, it was an old writing, some old writings by Gurdjieff. And in it, um, he, he was talking about how, um, how it, important it is to actively listen. That, that if you're passively listening, it's not really creating understanding, but rather, and there's not an action that goes on there really. But when you're actively listening, you're understanding something. And I think that, that part of what we all need to do is to, is to really listen. That's one of the capacities that this work is looking to develop as well, is to, uh, is to practice the art of listening and active listening to feed back what you've heard and to help to model what com coming to understanding is. Um, you and I have different cradle tongues and I don't speak hardly any German at all. <laughs> um, and, and so even, even with people who have the same cradle tongue, it's not, it's not always that we understand the words in the same way. No, and so that, that's another really important piece in what we can learn because we have different assumptions and we have different ways that we understand things. Yeah, so uh, you are talking about active listening, and you a little bit have said what you mean with it. But could you give a, a better definition what what active listening is and what is it not? For me, active listening is really is really deeply being present in the moment and taking in what someone has to say. Here's a good way to put it: it's not waiting to speak. Right. So many of us in conversation, we're like someone says something and we have this idea and you can tell they're already they're not listening anymore because they're waiting to speak. They're waiting to say that thing that they just thought of. Um, and that's wonderful. That inspiration is wonderful. But I think that we need to be able to learn how to actually just hold that space to listen and follow the curiosity. Right. Um, so, so I think that that's important for all of us. The speaking will come in the right moment, no? When I have thought something, I, I want to say that. And if I only uh, try to keep it in mind, I won't, don't want to forget it. I don't want to forget it. I don't want to forget. I have to say that. In the meantime, I have missed everything. <laughs> yes. And as a speaker, too, if I'm not listening while I'm speaking, like, it's so wonderful to be able to see your face and to feel when you want to say something. So I need to be listening when I'm speaking mm -hmm. yeah. and, and taking those cues. Yeah. It brings me in just now an association. You know I'm a musician and I have some favorite musicians like Janine Janssen and some others who, why, and also Glenn Gould, 
uh, while they are playing, they are listening to the music. They are listening the music into existence. I, I called it, uh, this is also a way of singing, no? I called it a time ago passive singing. But I'm, it's not really passive. It is active, but in a different way. And there are the others, they just do and do and do and do. And, you know, they listen for the correctness and something, but they are not birthing the music by listening. And this is a completely different feel when you hear the music, which is listened into existence. And when you hear this, no? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you for that. That's exactly the perfect metaphor. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know you were a musician. Tell me about that. I'm a classical singer. Uh, I went to Italy for studying uh, Italian opera. And then okay. I taught uh, for 20 years, I taught people to sing. And I okay. tried to tell them this introvert, uh, it's not introvert, not even, but that the voice comes in way instead of getting it out, you know, <laughs> in, with the, in a violent way, as many people think that the voice needs to be pushed out, but it's just not true. <laughs> yeah. It's to be received in your body and in your soul and everywhere. And it mainly in your body, you know, because you need to open the resonance um, parts of your body, otherwise it doesn't sound. And, and how do you teach people? How do you teach people that? Like, what are the words? Because that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful, Heidi. It's not so much the words; it's the physical feeling. The the you know the feeling of the vibrations inside you, and where you can feel it, and where you can guide, it, and where can you feel the breath, and how do you guide the breath? But not in a doing way, more in an accompanying way, and recognizing ah, this is better. Uh, and this was not so good. So what is the difference, you know, in creating the own way of, I, I called it grammar, a grammar for what you are doing, but it's you and nobody can tell you, you have to do it in this way or in that other way or whatever, because it's not you as you work with your body and with your soul and with your psyche, with everything, you know. So I teach people to find that, and I call that into a voice train. But I sort of gave it up because, you know, and you know how, how the um, people are, they want to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want to do it too, but later, you know, first it must go, the voice must go through your body before it comes out, you know, and I teach, for instance, the voice goes out of your feet or okay. out of your lower body, you know, and not out of the, because otherwise it doesn't take uh, the, the spine, it doesn't take the, the body structure, it doesn't take the, the, the spaces which it needs to be loud. People think they make the voice loud by pushing. That's not why it's only squeaky or, uh, you know, uh, un uncomfortable to listen to. But when it is filling up your whole body, then it is, oh, you know, really. Yes. <sighs> so, and with the instrument, it's the same thing, you know, when, when it's a, uh, the way of how you approach your expression, it's everywhere the same. I had an, I did some time ago Aikido, at least I tried to, and I talked with an Aikido teacher and he said it's the same principles. Let it come, drive, listen to it, and then respond to it. Not react, yes. respond, you know? And that's exactly what you say for listening in conversations and the same yes. thing music with Aikido, with many of the disciplines which are a little bit more um, conscious, a little bit yes. mindful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a sense of sensing in it, right? Absolutely. Like it's, and it's, and that is the activeness. That's the activeness that you talked about trying to describe. Yeah, yeah. Sensing is the right word. It is a continuous sensing alertness in the positive way, you know? Yes. But not, <clears throat> I have to do that and I push it through, you know? And I think that there's a corollary as well in, <clears throat> in this extractive sort of paradigm we've been in like when we're when we're when we're pushing out our message or we're pushing out our voice 
um, again, we're kind of trying to overlay in a sense of power yeah. in, in how we uh, react to the world rather than, as you say, respond, yeah. right? You know, when we stay with the example of the voice, when you take out all this pushing power, the voice gets bigger because it can really fill you up and it gets bigger without um, force, without, you, you need much less force when you do it in this way. Otherwise you are, afterwards, you know, it's all sweaty and <laughs> you are exhausted when you do it with power. But when you do it in the natural way, which is uh, in a harmony with your body and your soul, then, I mean, a little bit you have to work. Yes, your muscles have to work, but you are not completely depleted by the power. No? I sometimes saw singers even of a good class and the, I had so much compassion for them because they tried to push and push, be louder and they could hardly be, be heard, you know, because they didn't get this, you know, some people get it and some don't. And yes. um, normally it's not taught and I taught it and I had very good success. But, you know, I get tired of people wanting to, to do. So I'm, I'm interested uh, actually about how, um, how it feels to me that in doing that, in doing those teachings, that you will have had people, um, I'm sorry, my sister is sending me lots of, of messages and I've got to turn this off. Um, sorry, I am um, uh, um, Okay. Uh, sorry. Ah, it's bonging and I can't figure out how to turn it off. Okay. <laughs> um, just in looking at um, the transformation that happens when people really understand that listening. Um, uh, you must have had people that really did have internal transformations while they were learning how to listen. Maybe you can share a little bit about that. Yeah. I had, for instance, a young guy. He was maybe 24, 25. And he was very suspicious because he thought it is boo-boo, you know. That's, uh, that's not. And then he came to, to do lessons and... He developed a very nice voice and he brought a lot of students to me. And he had a familiar situations where he had a handicapped brother and later also a handicapped mother. She had a stroke. And so he was always, he felt like imprisoned in this family and always, you know. And with this work, he was able to do some bioenergetic um, therapy. And some of the things uh, done, which were in his, um, let's say, in his baggage. And then he left. He's now living in France. And he could separate from the family also. All these um, requests came on him to, 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 to suppress and do what the others want from him. Because he studied uh, uh, something in university he didn't like at all. And so he took his own life in his hands. This was a, a great success. I, I felt it really a great success. And mm -hmm. then there was another person, but he was too young to understand it. He is now singing in the big, big, you know, everywhere in the world. Uh, <laughs> in the Scala and in, in, in mm -hmm. Chicago and I don't know where. He was too young to really, um, how do you say, get that. He, when he left me, he was 20 and he fell into the hands of the doers. So I'm uh, a little bit disappointed about that. But I always think, you know, the seed I have led. And when they come to the moment when the voice doesn't work anymore, then they might think, well, remember, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, there were many uh, people, you know, people like, <laughs> I wanted to say you and me, uh, who, who just sing in a, in a church choir and they, they learned a lot. There was one person who, who couldn't listen. He always was out of tune. He, you know, he sang something 
by himself. And I found out when people are not in tune, it's not because they are not have no musical intelligence, but because they cannot listen. Right. They don't take the time to listen. They want to do, and there is this moment where they cannot control what they are doing, and then the, what they do comes out in the wrong way, and then they are rejected and, you know, and um, criticized, and then they are getting worse and worse and ever more... Um, ever more closed in themselves. And I had several of those with whom I worked and they were able to sing perfectly afterwards. Not like yeah. a big singer, you know, but they have learned to listen and do the same note as the neighbor, <laughs> you know, a note yes. which belonged in the harmony. There was one guy, you know, he, he played the mandolin and uh, in the band, they always had said to him, don't open your mouth, no? And he uh, succeeded to open his mouth and sing song together with his mandolin and in publicly. And this, you know, it, it took some time, but really it was about listening. It was about mm -hmm. taking the time and listen, be quiet, calm down, listen, and then try out. Is this what I'm doing the same thing? Because it's a double listening, no? It's listening to the other and listening to myself. And yes. Match these things together. Oh yeah, that it was very, very interesting. What I love about the about the metaphor of music is so direct and clear because it is also that we're all playing different instruments. Mm -hmm. If you look at us all around the world, we're playing different instruments in how it is we are in the world, right? And and to really make a beautiful uh, harmony we need to be able to listen and play our different parts and they're not the same. And you know, it is, I can again take the example of the voice. When you sing, when people sing in this active pushing way, then when they sing together, it sounds like, hmm, okay. You know, it's like, if it's not really. It doesn't fit, it doesn't know, tune. You yeah, feel a little bit uncomfortable. If people sing in this full way with their whole body and in this relaxed way, there can be dissonances, how many there want to be. And it's wonderful music. I, I don't know, you know, you know, probably tuning when, when people sing together as a meditation. I use that often that we just sing, everybody sings something. And you can really hear if somebody is themselves and listening in themselves because then all the voices mix to a big uh, wonderful complex sound but if somebody ah, 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 you know <laughs> yes. that doesn't doesn't mix anymore so you everybody you know, this is what's the astonishing thing which I noticed over the years um, of teaching I often taught several people together and did some courses, you know, where a group is together. In listening, everybody realizes this. Everybody hears when it is good and you like to listen to a voice and when it's not so good, when you feel mm, everybody, there's no exception. Everybody understood when the voice came out better and when it came out worse. So we have an intuitive understanding of what let's say harmony is yes we don't always know how to create it yeah but we we, we hear it we feel it and um we are competent in it it's only to find the tools and this uh, comes back to the topic of today today techniques and tools mm -hmm. to create relationships that is a tool to create relationship for instance singing together singing together in this listening way, not necessarily in a choir where everybody tries to be louder than the other one. It can be nice too in the group experience, but it's not the full experience you can. You said something else, Heidi, that, that I was really feeling, which is about feeling, right? Because it's not just listening. It's actually that you can feel it in your body and there's a, there's a, there's a depth and, and wisdom and knowledge and sense of rightness within the body that you can feel and I that too, listening 
uh, listening to the body, listening yes. to the inner vibrations, listening what what is alive, what when you have the sound, it is a sound of an instrument, but even with the voice is much more because you are the inter instrument. I always said to the people, don't listen so much with the ears, because that can be, you know, whatever room you are in, it can be different. And But listen to your body, and when you feel it in the right place, you can be sure that it's right. Yes. So this is for me a, a way of listening. Feeling is a way of listening. Yes. And it ties it all together, because... And, and I think that that's a place where we can help to develop our abilities, right? Absolutely. And uh, studying to sing in this way, is, it has been the salvation for me, you know, because, uh, you know, I was uh, university and all the mind uh, <laughs> based, head based, and I should have done this and this and this and I knew I couldn't uh, continue and that's why I chose singing and slowly I chose the way to discover this for myself because you, I, I didn't learn it from anybody else so for me it was the personal growth uh, way and I for a long time I hoped I could get it out to people as a way of growing. Yes and you know in in the work that you do with the Wisdom Factory and I mean, this is high level listening, right? Like you are, you do have things that you want to say as well. And you have this strong intention of bringing, uh, of, of bringing together people to, to grow our wisdom, right? Um, but maybe you can talk a little bit about your journey uh, with that, Heidi, just so, so that our, our viewers and myself can better understand what your deeper intentions are with the Wisdom Factory. <clears throat> the Wisdom Factory was born two years ago, a little bit more than two years ago, after I had already done for a year these live broadcasts and I had learned the technology and all the things, overcome the fear of being seen, that somebody sees how old I am and stuff like this. And um, <laughs> it came out of the desire to do something together with Mark about the topics we are really deeply interested in and the topics we are interested in is everything which has to do with consciousness, with growing up, with waking up and with helping people to, to come out of the low stages of consciousness, to, to, to wake up, not only spiritually, that is not so much my, uh, my uh, expertise, but psychologically and you know in in so ways this is yes. um and i'm still going by knowledge and the integral theory for me when i got to know it and when was it 97 that i read the first book of ken wilber mm -hmm. i was blown away i thought oh that's what i always sort of felt and thought but i couldn't give words to it and since yes. then, I was so much concentrated in reading this and growing my... It is knowledge, yes, but it's also something more. It's understanding yes. of things which before you couldn't bring together because you said, how can that be? You know, I now could say, how can that be with this guy in America? I, I know how it can be. It doesn't mean that I find it good, but I, I know that what it is. I can put it in a, in a framework and understand how this could be, could be evolved and how we have been in the similar state as five-year-olds or six-year-olds, you know, and then evolved. And thanks God we did evolve. And so our intention is to inspire people to, to evolve <laughs> by yes. listening and to maybe go also a little bit into the theory because it's really, really so eye-opening. And if not, at least by meeting people who are grounded in this bigger worldview, to listening to them and see how different they see things and how they differently explain things and how they are different and maybe get inspired by that. 
it's all about yeah helping the coach helping the to go into in a different mindset which really has the potential to, to overcome to help to overcome this these huge challenges we are in now yes in the inner world of people but mainly also in the world of, of, of people because as soon as somebody understands what they are doing by putting a uh, poisoned water into the fracking wells and then comes an earthquake and the water the, the tubes uh, break and the water goes into the water supply and you know people get poisoned by drinking this water as, soon as somebody really really deeply understands that they cannot do it anymore yes I'm if we broadly know what's actually going on we can stop things yes but yes. We need to know. We need to know and really, really, not only I heard that a little bit, but really feel it in the full consequence of what he's doing. And, you know, the people who are doing that, often they, they don't know. They are just yes. not aware. Just not aware. <laughs> it comes to my mind uh, uh, a story I have heard. And I actually saw a talk of an elderly man, a public talk, and he he, I think he was about 70 or something. And he said in this public talk that he had offended his wife so many times and he didn't know. Right. He needed somebody to tell him what he did so that his eyes could open and he could understand, oh, that's it, what I did. And right. to be able to apologize. So it's really, I don't think that there are bad people who are doing that. They just don't know. And we need yes. to spread the, the knowledge and the awareness of what they are doing without offense. You know, the thing is when we fight and they won't listen. So we need to find a way uh, yes. where people can listen to that and not feel guilty and out of this guilt then get hard and but be able to change their way of, of doing and of seeing the world. Yes. This is my motivation behind wonderful. So many, Thank you. so many people say, oh you know, you're talking about politics, you're talking about ecology, you're talking about music, you are talking about I don't know what. And we don't really know what you are doing. And uh, it is difficult, you know, if you want to earn money, it would be better we concentrate on something and then we try to say we are an expert in, I'm an expert in voice for sure, but maybe expert in relationship and communication and something. And when we are all that together and interested in many different areas, mm -hmm. because we know that the areas are expression of what we are working with. It's not about the areas, but it is about yes. the underlying principles and understandings. Uh, people get confused when they are in this, when they don't see what is under that. They only see, yes. what, what are you doing? Are you doing relationships? Are you doing eating? Are you doing singing? Are you doing politics? What, what are you doing? You know, oh, nobody knows and so on. <laughs> Well, I think one of the things that I that I see just with that piece, Heidi, is that we're we're used to breaking things down into different segments. Um, but of course, we know this whole thing is connected um, from the dualistic dualistic view that we have and how we're taught things. We are taught to to think th as things as separate, um, but that's not actually true. Everything is connected. Um, as you say, when when uh, fracking happens and those uh, condensates go into the into the earth, these toxins, um, they they do mix with the aquifers, and then you have an earthquake, right? It, so it's not just that that company would need to be careful of where it is that they are extracting the natural gas from. It's actually that we're in a whole system and the water, the aquifers under there are connected and that if there is an earthquake, it will mix and that will affect all of us. So it's not as simple as just thinking, oh, well, we can, we can, um, uh, we can take the precautionary principle seriously if we if we just 
do our best business way of mitigating the risks. It's, it's not like that. It's actually we are part of a whole system and each part affects the next. We don't think of that necessarily. Um, but part of, I think, what we're experiencing both in our work is that when we start talking about one thing, it is connected to all of the others. And this kind of sense making, I think, is very powerful in modeling the kind of wisdom we need to learn how to be and do. Absolutely, absolutely. We need to and the separation and the compartmentalization of, of, of the world and of our thoughts and of our, um, what we do. We need to come yes. to a bigger overview. And that's all about what inter theory says and teaches, you know, that yes. we need to have more perspectives, be able to, to hold uh, several, uh, as many perspectives as possible and not to exclude the bad ones, be able also to see the bad things without, uh, you know, uh, getting desperate, but do something. <laughs> yes. You know. So yeah. with your with your work with the Wisdom Factory, um, you know, certainly one of the things that I see in more traditional media is that people, you know, they get experts and the experts talk and, you know, but it's, it doesn't include the communities of need or communities of use or like the people that are actually affected on the ground. Um, and what I've kind of, what I've noticed or felt in your approach is that you are reaching out to a broad range of people. Sh certainly you're looking for some, some uh, conscious uh, a reason to be there. That person feels like they have a purpose and a, and a perspective that uh, might not be a traditional sense of expert, but they're experts in their life and their knowledge base. Absolutely. And I think that's really important. Um, and maybe you can speak a little bit about how you have approached really gathering that wisdom and sharing it. You mean how I, I approach the people, how I find the people? Yeah, you can start there. I, I, I would start with the other thing. We invite people to talk with us here on screen and in public and people can see it on YouTube. But we are also very happy if people collaborate. You know, I have so often uh, sent out the, the call to action, come and join us or by comments or even on camera, you know, because we did in last time we did after the shows in the last series, we there was blab and we could come together and we uh, the viewers came together, some of them. But I see there is um, much hesitation in, in doing that. People watch, I see there are many views after a while, but there is not much comments, there's not much participation. For me, the thing which I really, really want is that people come together more, you know, not only the experts or me asking questions or something, but that, that we create a, a conversation community. We have yes. some people with whom we are in constant contact uh, uh, from, from the last, let's say, year and a half where we do the shows. And some are very faithful and show up, but it's not as much as I would like to yeah. engage people because everybody has something to share. And you said it, you don't have to be an expert in integral theory to, to talk about what is going on in the world and how else can we view that, you know? It is also what um, my intention is and also the one of Mark, he's sitting here nearby and listening, uh, okay. is <laughs> lurking. <laughs> <laughs> really to create a space for people to share and to collaborate and to to develop the wisdom. Because when I met Mark, it was the first time that I had somebody near me with whom I could explore topics, which before I was thinking about myself. And once in a year, I met some people to, with whom to talk about things. But you know, when you have constant possibility to talk, in a creative way, things can come up which you yourself couldn't think about, you know, and you know it perfectly. It's when you talk with other people, there comes, it is a sort of a group mind which is forming. And I'm really, mm -hmm. the, the intention would be 
to gather as many people or inside the room or then as uh, viewers and with comments and create this broader mind so that new solutions, new ideas can just pop up. You know, you probably know the Sharma U process, process U. I don't. Yeah, and so I, I recommend you. This is a, um, explored how these um, group processes can go into the depths and from the depths where you think it's nothing happening, then it comes out on the other side with uh, completely new and surprising, it can come out on the other side, surprising uh, insights and um, mm -hmm. ideas. So this is, I think this is the main motivation we still have. Also, I put yeah. so much energy in it and no money whatsoever <laughs> is coming. <laughs> but it is just not, you know, I just cannot give up. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, there's there's two things. One, the one piece that you said around holding the space, and just to uh, kind of orient ourselves back to the the series, women matters. And from my perspective, a women a woman's a feminine principle is to actually hold that space, right? Rather than this kind of kind of pushing out, as you say, with the voice. Um, whether it's songs or whether it's words, um, it's a it's a male action, right? But the fe feminine principle holds the space for something to be, and I think that is deeply, deeply powerful. And uh, and it's and you can't control when you're holding the space for something. You can't control what's going to show up in that space. No. On the one hand, there's this there's this really powerful uh, power that can come through in holding that space that's greater than that single pushing power in us pushing our voice out there, right? And so I think you've got your finger on it, so, you know. And I really recognize, you know, our work in in uh, coherence with each other, in resonance with each other, in that sense. Yeah, and I want to add to that this is the real courage to be in the unknown. You don't know what will come out, you know, instead of courageously doing things, you know. The real courage is to be comfortable and with the unknown, what will come out, we don't know. But yes. be sure we can handle it in some way. And also, we have influence on how things go. We, we, it's not just somewhere mm -hmm. from outside things uh, are happening. We have an influence. Yes. And use it wisely, coming back to the wisdom, which is not necessarily expressed in words. It is the way of doing, the way of being inside the situation and not knowing what will be. You know, somebody said this is also the feminine thing in the way that when you give birth, you don't know how it will be. What no. Will and when it will be. You have to, 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 to wait and listen, and when it's time, then it will come out, and who knows what, no? So this is a, the old experience of, of women, to be able to trust in the process. And yes. wait until the new is born. Yes. Thank you that you do it with me together and with the other girls. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Heidi. Um, so uh, in, the, in the sort of process, we've gone a little fast through it, but we have kind of done the process that I've been, uh, I've been holding space for. Uh, how can we help each other, Heidi? I mean, obviously, we're doing it already and in, in doing our practice with these uh, with these shows, with uh, Women Matters. Mm -hmm. um, but how else do you think we can help each other? You know, no. I think the main thing is to hold the space, to, to encourage each other not to give up. Yes. So to, to be there when we need, when we need somebody to... When we lose courage or when we lose confidence, but it is always, you know, in processes, it's always the moment when you go down and 
we need some somebody else. We need a community of people who are willing to support each other. This is yeah. a more general thing. How we two together, I have no idea. Just continue to talk and see what comes out. Do the you process. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, one of the, I, I'll just share a little bit because there's, there's two kind of lines of, of content, of conversations that I'd like to uh, create. One is these, is these going deeper one-on-one -on -one pieces that um, we've touched on a little bit today and that I've started with Gertrude. Um, and the other is to bring small groups of people together to talk about specific issues um, really quite, speci yeah, very specifically and really considering um, a diversity of, of perspective and focused from within that group that still comes into co a coherence. To Because what I'm really looking to do is to develop lateral capacity, right? Like how can we help each other? How can we grow understanding together about what it is that we're looking to do and help to progress each other's work? Right. And, you know, some of that for us, our stuff is really direct. We're both wanting to do um, conversations with community members and bring light to some of these deep issues and 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 in, you know, invest in having those conversations so that people can know more and people can really participate. Right. But with other issues, there's going to be there's going to be other types of people that may want to come together. And so it's modeling bringing together different silos of people and breaking down those silos through the conversation itself. So I think that those are things that we can be on a practice on together and help each other by feeding back into each other's process and maybe thinking into different participants that we can each host. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. This is a wonderful idea. The, when, when you talk about other people and other uh, perspectives, I always am a little bit skeptic because I see that that this is this hesitation. If you really get people to 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 talk, maybe if when it's not public, maybe it's easier, you know. Because I see so much shyness, so much holding back, so much. That's culture, no? Where don't don't show what what uh, what is really going on with you and what you really think. And I think it's still so strong. So how would you imagine to, to find the people who would like to, to do that? Well, I mean, from my, in my world, I'm surrounded by a lot of activists and people who don't have voice. So uh, I would start there. I would start with people who need who you perceive or who self-identify as uh, as needing to get, have their voice heard because that is then they're motivated mm -hmm. and can see the point of sharing their perspective and and the other piece that I would just feed back for you is that you very naturally and uh, and authentically model your type of listening and holding space and that curiosity you have and how you ask questions like all of that gives people a model of how they can be so i think that you're fully embodying what it is to listen and share and giving people something that they can kind of hang on to um and and so that they can approach this work in a way that so they can show, really show up because they can see you know what heidi's just herself look She's just speaking how she speaks, how she would speak in, to anyone. Um, well, I could probably do that too, right? Yeah, it would be wonderful if somebody feels inspired <laughs> and shows up and connect with us or with you. And if you uh, want somebody to be in the group and you begin to speak, I'm very ready to, to be with you and talk because it's so wonderful. really love it. I love to... <laughs> to explore mindsets and to, you know, slightly, 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 slightly be able to maybe move them a little bit. Yes. Wonderful. It looks like we're at the end of our time, isn't it? 
Yeah, I thank you very much. We have never talked in two together. It was really a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> okay, and see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody okay. who is watching this. Now Thank you. or later, please, 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 please put your comments under the, the YouTube video or in our website and please connect with us. You have something to share with the world too. Okay, bye-bye.